Today I'm going to be demonstrating um, a small internal tool that we have that can help you with ETL. Um, to begin, uh, you need to connect to a database. Uh, this one currently supports uh, Postgres, Oracle, and MySQL. I have a small sample database on one of our servers. Uh, what this tool will do is it will read all the schema information in the database and generate a default set of subject, predicate, and objects from that schema information based on the rows and columns of the table. This uh, database, the main table, is really the employees. It's the main reason for this to exist. It's a pretty simple database. Um, can demonstrate a few of the features, and I'll go over some things uh, that are in the UI that um, you wouldn't need for this database, but other databases may have the requirements. So uh, looking at the employees database, try to get these URLs on the screen so you can see them. So typically what this tries to do is uh, generate a subject with a, a row uh, namespace, uh, then the uh, table name and a key that would be a primary key or, or at least a unique key uh, for the URL for the subject. Uh, the predicates represent the column names, uh, somewhat modified to make good URLs, and they're always in the namespace rel, which is short for relation. The objects uh, show you basically what table and what column name they're coming out of, and then uh, also give the type, if good type information is available in the schema. So that's roughly the beginnings of the extract portion of, of what you would do. Now, it takes into account the foreign key relationships or any other uh, joins in, mentioned in the schema. So for example, there's a small salaries table, which in this case has an, a primary key of both a employee number and a date uh, at which a certain salary became active, uh, a salary amount, which in this case they had it as an integer, and uh, an end date. So again, in this case, uh, what it tries to do is come up with a row that has um, a unique key for each item in the database, the salaries table, and then it takes the two primary keys and, and makes them into a unique URI. In this case, the predicates are, again, just the column names of the table. And uh, this relates to the employee. As you can see, this is a URI for the employee number. It's the primary key in the employee table. Now, sometimes uh, in SQL, the tables tend to point in opposite directions of what we're used to in, in say, an RDF. Uh, so one thing you might want to do is edit this rule. And um, instead of going from the salary to the employee, uh, you might want to go from the employee. Um, and in this case, I'll just make a uh, I think I use a constant. <laughs> I'll make the relation called has salary. And then uh, it will go to the salaries table. So now I've switched the uh, sort of direction of this subject and uh, object. And the predicate sort of makes more sense in terms of RDF world where we often use verbs for predicates. I could do the same thing here with uh, titles. So you can use the namespaces in here. In this case, our tool doesn't necessarily output any RDF predicate or any, uh, sorry, any triples that would represent the type information in the database. So it doesn't create a hierarchy of objects and give them RDF types and that sort of thing. 
there are some open source tools that I've used that try to create a full OWL uh, representation of the database, which is also in your model. And then you have the option of just exporting the model or exporting both the model and the data. This particular tool mostly works on the data. All of the data is driven from what data is in the rows and um, partially from the schema information. Now, if you have a database which doesn't have uh, the table relationships set up, but may, for instance, have a particular column that does have a key which can be used to look up something in another table. There are ways to uh, join two tables and specify fields that are the join key, in which case you can get around the fact that they didn't have all of the model information in the SQL. So uh, it takes about 20 minutes for me to um, download this data from the server. So I've already pre-populated a couple of Allegrograph databases, and I'll uh, demo those in Gruff in a moment. You have the options right now of, uh, for Allegrograph 4.0, the option is to export to n triples, um, And then you can uh, use AG load or other mechanisms in AG4 to load the data. Um, I'll show you a couple more features. Um, there are features when you're creating uh, rules. As you can see, there's literals, there's constants. The row ID is uh, the data in the, in the column of that row. Uh, column name can be used. You can create a new blank node. Um, this is just um, useful for putting the graph information and um, you also can select any of those in the graph column. Uh, and then there's this uh, case select where I believe it's a small, I haven't had a, a need to use this, but it's a, it's a small case type statement where you can say, based on this field, if some conditional is true, then use this value. Otherwise, use a different value. We don't necessarily find very often that this tool is useful for doing your entire ETL in this in the tool itself. Some of the developers that have worked with customers at Franz, they prefer to get the data in as raw form as possible into a triple store and then use the power of uh, queries on a graph to aid them in their transformation phase where they go to the final model and also do some data cleanup. So that's been the primary use of a tool like this for now, uh, rather than putting a lot of the smarts in the tool with um, tons of programming ability, uh, it's just been trying to get the data in as raw form as possible into a triple store and then use the power of a Lego graph to um, help to do the transform. So I, um, I exported two models, and um, one was the default, and the other was the modified version, which had the salaries and the titles um, predicates uh, reversed so that they point in the opposite direction. I think we'll take a look at them in Gruff, and you'll see what kind of uh, database it looks like after it's been extracted. OK, so the first triple store I'm going to open is just the default employees uh, extraction using the default predicates as assigned by the tool itself. I'm just going to start with an employee that I know of. When you export the data, actually I can show you that. I've already, when you generate triples, you need to provide the namespace for both the row and the relation namespaces. So in this case, I just used a, a Franz URL as an example. So that's what I'll be typing in here. So uh, if you recall, the employees were the table name plus the employee number. I believe there's a 10,001. So I like to just explore the graph by following links. 
So I just added predicates for it to add to the graph. So for this example, you can see that the, the relationship from the salaries points to the employee, uh, through the employee number, uh, which is a little bit unnatural. But there, there are several um, salaries that are related with this employee. This is a, I, I don't know exactly why um, dates that are encoded by a Lego graph are displayed this way as opposed to their formatted. But um, uh, the date information, the uh, first name, last name, is all available here, uh, birth date and hire date. This employee doesn't look to be assigned to any particular uh, title at the moment. So what I'll do is uh, Search down these departments a bit. Well, we have a department 05. And then it'll get me a list and I'll uh, pick a subset of people that are in this department. We can look at another employee. Actually, it might be better. I will explore the graph. Once this is done, I'll explore the graph that we did the modified relationship on so that we can see. So I'm going to close this triple store. My apologies for that. I'm just going to add a couple of them. All right, and then we will select our brackets. And so we go see what they look like. for somebody who may have had a, uh, so this, this is a has title relationship. So as you can see, we now have the salaries and the title going from the employee uh, to the other rows in the other tables, uh, which may make a little more sense in the RDF world. I'm just going to add some more. and. Uh, Expand out the title a bit. So the pretty generic title. He was just a staff member, and uh, at the from and the two date in the department that uh, he's in. So that's the basic uh, direct from SQL, focusing on just extraction of the data and the relationships between them. Uh, with just a couple of modifications on some of the predicates and the directions uh, that they would go from subject to object uh, versus the other way around. <clears throat> Are there any questions or things you'd like to, to see more about the data that's been extracted? It's not too complicated of a database, but it should give the idea of what our tool can do.